Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, I'm Long Lao. I'm a general surgery resident. Uh, I am also a uh, research fellow at Children's National Medical Center, and I've been working with Dr. Richard Cha, who's in the back, uh, over the past year and a half that I've been at Children's uh, in terms of work improving surgical vision. And so our system is called Clarity, and it is based off a uh, speckle image laparoscopy system. And so we know that anastomotic leaks um, happen quite often, uh, and overall the cost is an extra $3.6 billion just to take care of these complications. And there are many components as to why someone develop a leak, and, and we know this um, pretty well. One of the things that we can do is to make sure that the blood supply to the anastomosis is adequate. Um, so moving uh, with that thought, uh, how do we do laparoscopic perfusion analysis. There hasn't really been a good system out there except for fluorescence laparoscopy. And what we are uh, using is the principle of laser speckle contrast imaging. Essentially, using monochromatic light, uh, near infrared light, uh, we know the pattern of the, uh, the photons that comes out of the emission source. And once it hits the tissue, that pattern changes. And that change is going to be relative to the motion within the tissue. So essentially, the perfusion or the blood flow, red blood cells. And from there, we can calculate the perfusion data. Um, and to, uh, so, so it will give the surgeon an image of the blood supply as well as the flow rate. Essentially, our system is what's going to help surgeons see better by making the invisible visible. In the video, in the, in the left-hand side, you see the, the section of the bowel that has been tied off from a blood supply. It's ischemic, and our system is able to pick that up. It's able to show the, the major uh, feeding vessels in the mesentery and into the, uh, into the bowel itself. And this blue is the overlay of our system that uh, we can present over directly in the laparoscopic video. So essentially, it's a novel method for non-invasive, dye-free imaging for digital angiography. It can be used for perfusion. It can be used for flow rate calculation in the blood vessel, helping you identify blood vessels that's hidden. And we have been able to, uh, in the video, sorry, in the pictures, uh, test it in the intestine, uh, in the gallbladder, and the mesentery of swine. And so we know that the competing technology is fluorescence laparoscopy. Um, for those of you that use fluorescence laparoscopy, uh, when you inject ICG, you really have to disrupt the workflow in the OR. You have to get someone to inject it, uh, time the imaging very well so that uh, you can get the maximum uh, emis emission uh, from the fluorescence in the blood vessel. Our system is different. Uh, it uses no contrast. so. Uh, Essentially, at any point during the case, whether beginning at the end, you're, you're thinking, hey, let me just take a look. You just turn on a system, and there it is. And it's, so it's an easy buy-in. It doesn't really s disrupt the surgical workflow. And we understand the importance of fluorescence imaging. Um, we know that ICG, for example, is v valuable in identifying the, uh, the bowel duct. And so our system can coexist. Uh, we use the same near-infrared sensor and light. So essentially what we can provide in this system is a method for presenting the fluorescent signal and the laser uh, speckle contrast imaging signal all together onto one screen, so giving you uh, anatomy from a biliary standpoint as well as a, a perfusion standpoint. So laser speckle contrast imaging isn't new, uh, but our group was uh, the first group to really design the system to be coupled into a laparoscope so that we can actually use it from a laparoscopic standpoint. There are inherent limitations to this technology because it uses motion as a, as a, uh, a relative calculation. Uh, breath movement or movement of the camera can affect, affect the result that you get, uh, but that can be calculated out from an algorithmic standpoint. Penetration is something that is a problem uh, that we see with fluorescent laparoscopy. With near infrared light, we know that the maximum penetration is about one centimeter. Uh, but that, that's an inherent limitation uh, of, of what using uh, near-infrared light. 
So if you look at the global market for laparoscopy device, uh, in 2015 it was $9.3 uh, $9 billion. Novadec, uh, who was the first company to introduce a fluorescence laparoscopy system, uh, after 10 years on the market, got sold to Stryker for $700 million. Uh, <laughs> so we know there's a strong need and a strong push to improve surgical fission, especially in the, uh, in the field of laparoscopy. And laser speckle contrast imaging is definitely the next thing, uh, we believe. Um, so right now, we have a working uh, research proof of concept. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, I would love to see this in, in a, a system, a laparoscopy system, with the camera, the light source, and the graphical processing unit all together so that you can just see everything uh, so, and not changing the, the world of how surgeons would interact with um, uh, doing minimally invasive surgery. So it's going to be a 510K process. Um, and it's uh, likely a class two device based off of our discussion with some uh, FDA experienced uh, councils. So I, again, we are a research group and there certainly has been a lot of interest in this technology. So we are looking into uh, potential VC interests as well as um, even just research interests. How do we move forward with this technology? Uh, we do have uh, ideas as to how to improve the hardware as well as, as well as the software. And hopefully, you know, within the next five, 10 years, we can try to get this uh, system into clinical practice. So we have a very strong team behind us. Uh, Dr. Cha, he's the inventor and the primary investigator. Um, and he is the, uh, he has, well, Children's uh, owns a patent. It's a provisional patent at this point. But um, we have a great team of engineers. And our leadership, Dr. Anthony Sandler and Dr. Kalali Eskandanian, has been very uh, helpful in helping us move forward with uh, what we want to achieve here. So thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me or Dr. Cha.